Gropey pervert Bill Clinton just weighed in on the border issue in New York. And he's taking the conservative side. What happened to this guy? <laughs> we'll find out together. I'm Doug. Welcome to Exile. Let's get through some news. Thank you guys for subscribing, giving us comments, follows, stars, thumbs up. You know, do it all, guys. Headline, Bill Clinton backs bid to change New York City's right to shelter law given migrant crisis. Quote, we need to fix it. I could get all this, uh, these comments from right wingers, but to me to get them from left wingers, when left wingers start saying what right wingers say, you go, that's the left just totally owning themselves saying we have destroyed everything. Our, we created a migrant crisis in New York and something has to change. We did it. And that's why I'm laughing at Bill Clinton, America's favorite predator. Hideous sculpture. I detest modern art. This is from the New York Post. Quote, Democrat former President Bill Clinton acknowledged Sunday that New York City's progressive right to shelter law needs to be amended given the migrant crisis. So we've already heard this from Eric Adams, that New York is being overrun. And now they're going to lo start losing elections. They're going to lose votes. Their people are suffering. Even the illegals that are there are suffering. Here's Bill Clinton, quote, Governor Kathy Hochul thinks it should be modified and it probably should under the circumstances. The issue is currently in litigation with advocates for the homeless and asylum seekers opposing any significant rollback of the law. So it's the liberals now that Clinton is having a problem with, uh, Hochul is having a problem with. People to their left are saying any change or any rollback of these asylum seekers uh, is a problem. You're, you're racist, basically, is what they're going to call them, including Clinton. <gasps> and Clinton said the problem is migrants have to wait months to get work permits to the shelter. So the shelter needs to be relaxed. The rules need to be relaxed to give them work permits. That's where that's the big change he wants to make, not build the border. Uh, or militarize the border. You're going to hear some other uh, ideas he has, lunatic stuff he has, ideas for the border to fix it. But right now, he wants to speed up the work permits he's going to give to illegals. Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot. I want to just combine that with recent news out of California, where California just said they're going to raise the minimum wage to $20 an hour. So now, as you know, the minimum wage jobs, things like at McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Taco Bell, uh, work labor. It is now going to be where you're going to force Americans and businesses to pay recent immigrants $20 an hour. Don't tell me that. This is the biggest tectonic shift in America's makeup that they're going to have. And I don't even want to go into the voting yet, okay? Because there's a lot of people on, to my, on my right because I'm a Republican conservative, a lot of people going like, oh, they just want the votes. They just want the votes. No, you go into the Hispanic community and tell them that the Democrat party is for same-sex marriage and for changing uh, the gender of their, taking away their children and changing their gender. And the Hispanics will vote Republican every time. So even though right now they vote Democrat, it's totally jaded by Democrats to think and overly skeptical of Republicans to think that Hispanics are going to forever vote Democrat. It's just not necessarily true. Put on my smart guy glasses. Bill Clinton says it's broken. We need to fix it. It doesn't make any sense, he said, of the system. They come here and we're supposed to shelter people who can't get work permits for months. We need to change that. They ought to work. They need to begin working, paying taxes and paying their way. Most of these people have no interest in being on welfare. I don't care how many of them want to be on welfare and take advantage and be in our schools. Look, if I was in some third world hellhole, I'd want to be here too. Okay, so I never blame the immigrant for saying, look, if you're going to open up a hole in a fence and I can take my whole family in here and give them the greatest life known to man, I would do it, okay? It is breaking the law, but there are things that are more important than following the law, and that's like 
feeding your kids and not having them raised in some weird third world prison society. I, I understand why they're coming here. Now, us giving them jobs and opening the holes in the fence, that's where we're crazy and self-destructive. In the beginning, I tried to help Ma Mayor de Blasio, but he decided that he was more progressive than he thought I was, whatever that means. Oh, I know what that means. That's good internal fighting on the left. We have it on the right too, where who's more farther to the right? I'm farther to the right than most of you. Uh, and in Trump and in Clinton's case, de, de Blasio was saying, I'm more to the left of you and that I'm going to be even softer on immigration than you. Snowflake. The ex-president said that either way, Biden and the Democrats are taking a political hit for the chaos at the border and an immigration system that is clearly incapable of solving the crisis. Good. We want the Biden administration to be demolished over the, over the border. I want to keep underlining that that the border is wide open, that we have no border, that that was Biden deliberately two years ago and the hard leftists that are trying to reorganize America, recreate America in some new image, um, disastrously so, and evil. Clinton continues, the U.S. immigration system is built to handle about 400,000 immigrants. We should build more housing just over the Rio Grande and Mexico. This is just psycho. I think we should would support that, he said. Keep people there and let them in as quick as possible if they're going to uh, some place where we know they can get a job and they'll be welcome. Clinton wants us to build shelters for them over in Mexico to live in. And he only wants 400,000 of them to come over. We're talking about 10 million illegals coming over right now. That's a lot more than 400,000, Bill. That's a lot of housing. You're going to build an entire city down in Mexico to wait to pick your immigrants up. It just, this is all wishful thinking. They live in La La Land. Lunatics. He has no idea how critical, how crucial, first of all, how bad things are in Venezuela and Guatemala that's causing all these people to come up here. But now he's going to have us build shelters in Mexico. We're going to fund it. Look, I say build a wall, electrify it. Put your put armed guards in our army all around it, put a moat around it, fill it with alligators and crocodiles, and even more electric fencing before that one. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Quote, Clinton says, chaos has been very beneficial for Republicans. Whose fault is that? Look, he's, he's angry Republicans are benefiting from Democrats pooping the bed so bad on the border. That's not the Republicans' fault, okay? Republicans are the only alternative to your psycho policies of the left. Cute. Quote, we have a negative birth rate in America, and this is evil and psycho. Clinton implies that because... Americans aren't having babies that we need to bring in more Hispanics. How about get Americans to have babies instead of killing them, Bill? Nasty. He says, if that happens, the only way to keep our economy growing is either with immigrants or machines, he said. Look, Democrats see people as slaves and machines anyways. You can see already like his only mourning that the law is being broken is that we need these immigrants, as Nancy Pelosi says, to pick our fruit. They see them as slaves, not as a voting class or a citizen or human beings, but a permanent like Jawas in Star Wars. They want them to permanently just collect junk, dump our trash, put on new roofs on our building, work fast food. Bill Clinton is just a, uh, a scumbag and probably one of the greatest moral declines in Americans history fell under his watch. Like and subscribe if you guys dig what you're hearing. Stay with me right here in exile. We will get to this together. But it's funny to see Clinton concede all of this stuff and just say, the left, we blew it. Yes! The right are winning on this one. Good. I'm Doug in exile. Joe Biden delivers his first campaign ad. It just dropped. Not good. He can barely speak. They really don't have any live footage of him at all. I'm not surprised. And it is, of course, has a dark, hidden, satanic message to it and feel to it. Watch. <laughs>
I've made the preservation of American democracy the central issue of my presidency. Ooh. I made the preservation of the preservation of American democracy the central issue of my freedom of democracy. My we did not speed that up. You can go back and rewind it. He doesn't speak English. This is unintelligible and bizarre. He's dead. So it's not going to help him, of course. Welcome to Doug in Exile. I'm Doug Tenable. This is where the happy patriots are. We're here to completely dismantle this regime, this evil regime. And we have to stop it. It's going to be stopped in November is when the regime ends and they're terrified. So the, just think of the media thinking they're so confident putting out this gibberish spoken by this guy and they think you're going to still vote for him. I believe in free and fair elections. I believe in free and fair. Who doesn't believe in free and fair elections? You moron. You moral, you moral decrepit. Oh my. Everyone believes in free and fair elections. He acts like it's being brave. Hey, unlike all of you, I believe in free and fair elections. There's a tiny implication that he's kind of accusing Trump of not believing in free and fair elections. Even while this party, the Joe Biden party, removes Trump's name from the ballot. Pathetic. They say they still believe in free and fair elections. Are you buying that? And the right to vote fairly and have your vote counted. Unless you want to vote for Trump in Colorado or Maine, you don't get your vote counted. This is like such double speak, big brother, brainwashing, lying. And this is what the Democrat Party is going to roll out with. It's not going to work, of course. There's an extremist movement who does not share the basic beliefs in our democracy. There's an extremist movement. No footage of Antifa. No footage of Palestinians taking over New Year's Eve celebrations. No footage, none of that, none of Department Equity and Inclusion taking over Harvard's entire standards that are being destroyed. No footage of that. Just like probably the 30 or so guys with torches from four years ago. There's no new footage of this bizarre, made-up evil that he swears is out there. All of us are being asked right now, what will we do to maintain our democracy? Oh, we're going to get rid of you, number one, because you're trying to destroy our democracy by taking Trump's name off a ballot. You insect. That's number one. Here's ALX. Nothing unites the country more than calling over 74 million Americans, quote, extremists. Yep, that's what they do. We're the mega, mega extremists. History's watching. The world is watching. The world is watching, and I'm ashamed. Are any of you more proud the world's watching? Are you happy with America's reputation around the world? What do they think of us? It's horrifying. Most important, our children and grandchildren will hold us responsible. Your children and grandchildren are being extracted from a uterus. Don't tell us about our children and grandchildren. Our own families are just fine. Mr. Biden should probably be worrying about his own children more than mine, given what Hunter's into. The vice president and I have supported voting rights since day one of this administration. Again, you can barely understand what he's saying, but he's saying the vice president and he have supported uh, voting rights. Again, very brave. I don't know of an American that doesn't support voting rights. Have you ever even heard of one people? And the closest thing to not believing it are Democrats. And I ask every American to join me in this cause. Well, they already joined you and things aren't going so good. I'm Joe Biden and I approve this message. What a loser. Of course you do. I'm Joe Biden and I don't even know where I am. If you guys are going to still vote for Trump, give us a thumbs up and a comment downstairs. I'm Doug in exile. Hey, you want to sing a song? I know. Just keep checking. Just joking. <laughs> Liberal weirdos are always talking about diversity, but that's not what they mean. They mean to push you and me, normies, out.
That's their definition of diversity. I'm talking about the World Economic Forum. You know, they're doing all the environmentalist stuff out in Davos with weirdo eat Z bugs, Schwab and all that. Here's an example. Uh, Michael Knowles says the WEF invited an actual witch to catch magic spells on its panelists. First, let's watch this, in, this witch as she sings off key. <laughs> Weirdo, pagan, magic. Uh, come join Western civilization sometime. And so Western civilization No fear of her giving them the flu as she blasts them in the face. They're all smiling, going, yes, blast me, pagan witch. It would be funnier if she had just eaten a big can of sardines. And imbeciles in the audience, you know, applaud her. They're just touched and blessed because if she was praying for them, if she was a normal Christian praying for them, of course, they'd go like, we can't have that here. We need diversity. But now diversity on the left means uh, excluding Christians so much that it would actually be diverse to have like an old fashioned snake handler come out and have a revival. And then here we are over at opening prayers at Washoe County Commission. I believe this is in Reno meeting. They had a Satanist open up with a weirdo Satanist prayer. Thank you for letting us here. My name is Jason. I am an organizer and founder of Reno Satanic, and I am here to give the invocation today. Let us begin. In nomine de nostris. <laughs> this is how far diversity has come. Now they actually have a guy come in and later he will actually say, hail Satan. Of course, I do not fear Satan. I fear God, the Lord. And I'll explain why. I'll give you a theology reasons why, why these are all joke, pagan things that you don't ever have to fear. Satanus Luciferi Excelsi, in the name of the eternal rebel against tyrannical authority. That he's taking a shot at God, the creator of the world. In the spirit of your nature of the natural world. Who made nature and who made the natural world? It didn't make itself. And nowhere does anyone ever claim that Satan makes it. So he is subservient to the maker of everything. The freedoms of thought and expression, unprejudiced. Since when was Satan against prejudice and against, why would he be for free thought? He wants everyone to be slaves. So here he's, he's putting this morality into this being that even he never claimed. To bring influence and guiding actions of nobility and justice to the decisions made in this chamber today. Oh, nobility and justice. That is just so much the devil's way. That's what he's so into inspiring man to do. He wants you crawling around on the ground, eating dirt, probably eating other people. To act with might in the undertaking of responsibility that may lay ahead of this body before us today. I'd be so much better of a Satanist than you. You're a sellout. You don't even know what Satan wants. For our liberation, for here and now is our day of joy. Joy. That's so... <laughs> There's all those songs about Satan uh, bringing about joy. Joy to the world. To celebrate the wonders of the natural world. Who made the natural world? Which we say, Shemham Farash, hail Satan. Everyone should be laughing right now. <laughs> at this guy. And they should be looking at themselves going, what have we done? How far has America come to allow this in our public council thing they had to make room for him because if they let a christian pray they have to allow a satanist to pray and no you don't have to they're not equal they're not the same thing so you don't treat them the same way now there's people who are afraid of even hearing this guy talk his gibberish um i just want to quote martin luther here uh the devil is god's ape the devil is subservient below beneath god so i don't 
fear, uh, the second in command, third in command, the ruler of this world, all that. I only fear God. If you read the book of Job, you'll see the devil has to go and like grovel before God and ask, he has to ask permission to do anything to Job. So you never have to worry about the authority of Satan on anything. Meanwhile, we're going to go to football here where a football player says he gives praise to Jesus Christ as Savior on national TV. And of course, the networks have to edit it out. So first, here's the edited version, and I'll show you where the cut is. In your first NFL season and a record-setting performance for you, what does this moment mean? I mean... Okay, did you see that jump? He says something before that, I mean, he praises Jesus and they cut it out. So now watch this jump. I mean, I mean, it's been amazing being in this city for as short as I've been. But and now here's the unedited version where you'll see that before he says, I mean, he praises Jesus, something that they, they have to get out. They have to edit that out. You know, we got to bring in some diversity guy to hail Satan, but here's someone praising Jesus and the networks can't have him say it. First foremost, I just want to give all glory and praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, it's been amazing. And that's where America's diversity is. Just remember, when they say diversity, they mean hail Satan and cut Jesus out. Pray for this nation to repent. I'm Doug in exile. Mika Brzezinski is always the last to find out on MSNBC. The obvious, they don't see what that they're doing to Trump with the accused Trump of one day doing back to them. I think that's kind of the whole point. Welcome to Doug in Exile. This is where the happy patriots are. I can't thank you enough for watching this channel. That's all I'm going to say about that. Just heartfelt, need to say it more often. Thank you. Let's start with uh, Mika in a meltdown. Oh, boring. Can you explain yeah. how if Donald Trump even slightly pushes the envelope on this, which we know he will totally push the envelope, yeah. what this could look like in terms of, I mean, there are not going to be people around him who say, listen, yeah. I don't have immunity. I can't do that. That's not going to be the reality. This is Democrats freaking out that Trump got immunity. Their greatest fear that they're projecting is that he's going to do to them what they did to Trump. And I don't think Trump will ever do to them or treat them as badly or as illegally as they did to him. At all, in the way that you described him coming into office before, is accurate. He didn't think he'd win. He surrounded himself with people that he thought looked the part and might be good at the job that turned out to be restraints on his power. Now, the restraints on his power thing, uh, it is true all presidents find out what restraints they have once they get into office. I don't see the big conspiracy or the big problem with that. Biden learned the same thing when the Supreme Court reversed him on excusing student loans. He learned that his power was restrained, uh, restrained, thank God. It should be restrained even more. We need a restraining order on the president. The lesson he learned from that is get rid of all restraints. Make sure you only have loyalists working for you at the cabinet level, inside the White House, but also in the bowels of government. Trump did learn those lessons that you have to change your inner cabinet because he had leakers inside. He had people that boasted online that they were going to take him down from the inside. So of course it needs to be more careful who he lets in his cabinet, loyalty has to be an issue. He needs to be sure this time that he gets it right. Uh, because, you know, a lot of these people will turn on him in a court of law. They will try to gum up his stuff. Of course. Of course, of course. That's, uh, 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 by the way, it's not like Biden wants to sit around and have people working against him in his own administration. You dingling. Make sure that anybody like a McConnell, a Liz Cheney, a Paul Ryan, anybody who has institutional power that could thwart you, get rid of them. They're gone. All of them. Why are they gone? They got voted out of office. Trump didn't do that. Trump didn't get rid of Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan quit. By the way, Mitch McConnell endorsed Trump. So how's he gone? Liz Cheney, she got voted out of office. Someone, uh, we got a good, solid conservative to take her place. What do you mean they're gone? He acts like Trump disappeared him. I, the, by the way, this is the same MSNBC that will say Trump doesn't have the much, that much power with his endorsements to get his people elected. Now they're saying, no, Trump has this magic perfect wand. 
of whatever he wants. He can wipe people out. Well, well, how do you explain that even Rand Paul, we're going to do a video of this later, that even Rand Paul hasn't endorsed him yet. There's free, free thinkers. Thomas Massey has conflict with Trump. Lots of Republicans still have conflict with, uh, with Trump. And it's up to the people to elect them. If they want to elect more people to give Trump trouble, go to the voters. And, and there's not as much log, lockstep, blah, 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 I follow you, as there is on the Democrat Party supporting uh, Joe Biden. Where's uh, Kirsten Cinema? She opposed much of the administration. Where's Joe Manchin? Oh, they're gone. They're gone. There's going to be no person in a position of power in Congress, especially if Republicans win the majority in the House of Senate, who you would say is a Trump critic that would put the brakes on the work that he would do. A twist like you. Oh, if only, buddy, if only you're speaking my language and making me happy. May what you said come true. I have my doubts. But um, yeah, it would be great if Trump got all people on board to, to uh, follow his agenda. I just hope Trump's, the loyalty to Trump among all of the Senate and all the voters are as great as the loyalty showed to Biden over the last four years. That's all we need to get the job done, guys. A good attorney general, get that Department of Justice going. Special Prosecutor Jack Smith will have what? Special Prosecutor Steve Bannon. Oh, if only. He's not going to have any of those people around him. Before, there's people in, 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 in t inside of institutions of the government that most people haven't even heard of that could slow things down, gum things up. No, they know where those positions are now. Which Democrats are slowing things down and gumming things up for Joe Biden? You twit. <laughs> hey. They're so blind, you know? Th that's why I make a lot, of the, a lot of these arguments talking about the other side. I don't want us to be this blind about our guy, okay? It's always good. Empathy is good. Looking at things through the eyes of a Democrat is a good thing, even though right now you'd be in therapy over Biden's debate performance. They have all kinds of organizations outside of the uh, campaign that are making sure they have the right people in place. Oh, outside organism, organizations like George Soros, putting Alvin Bragg in place, putting Letitia James in place, putting Fonnie Willis in place, putting Merrick Garland in place, Wall Street donors. Funding the E. Jean Carroll trial, law firms. Yeah, I hope Trump does the same thing. Le just totally legal, do the same thing. Not in revenge, but in forcing empathy on the Democrats. They have to see what they did to us. We have to do it back to them. It's kind of a mutual assured destru destruction in a uh, nuclear arms race. You don't win Russia by giving up your nuclear weapons. Reagan beat them by outperforming them, outdoing them. And then you learn, wow, they have the same nukes I do. Trump must have the same Department of Justice and weaponize it exactly as much as Biden did. That's all I'm saying. As Trump says, reciprocal. I always like that because it sounds like Trump just learned that word. It has to be reciprocal. Yes, re reciprocity is what we want. Not only that, they're making sure that they have the legal argument for when they take these moves, that they could take it to the court and win. The courts have shown a proclivity towards siding with a lot of the stuff that Trump has wanted to do. The court does not do what Trump wants to do. He got partial immunity. It wasn't all the way. Um, a Biden court, if, Mick, could you imagine if the Supreme Court right now was six to three with Democrat appointments? If it was six Democrat appointments to three, if there's any way that I can see where God is protecting America and the DNA of the Constitution, it's where our with our conservative Supreme Court. That is one branch of government with a lifetime appointment. The Democrats can't touch, and it drives them crazy that Republicans are leaning into the Supreme Court in a way that's almost as bad as the Democrats would have done. If, they had, if Democrats had their advantage, it would be over on the Supreme Court, guys. Hats off to Trump for those Supreme Court picks. So there won't be restraint. So what can he do with it? Even the things I just outlined there, he's going to think about using the military in a way he has it in the past. Okay, Trump might use the military. Remember Biden had the 50,000 military people right after January 6th put up razor wire around D.C. They were just standing all around D.C. He used the military, but let's not, Biden may not have used the military, even though he when he fired all of the sergeants, he fired all the leadership and replaced them with woke people. You saw all the LGBTQ stuff throughout the military, the DEI. Um, 
um, giving favor to externals instead of merit all throughout the military. So Biden went in and wokeified the military plenty. And by the way, we still have our soldiers in there. Our people are still in there, sleeper cells. Biden used the Department of Justice, Biden used the FBI, okay, to spy on uh, Catholics, to spy on pro-lifers, to spy on the NRA. Okay, you don't have to get personal. Ooh, I wouldn't want them in my house. Um, Biden has his own weaponization of government. I hope Trump does the same. The Justice Department, throughout history, it's not necessarily written into the Constitution that there has to be this huge level of, of independence, but through tradition and through operation, it has is, is been an independent agency. He's been very clear, there's not gonna be an independent agency. He's gonna have a loyalist as Attorney General. The Attorney General is gonna get rid of anybody in the Justice Department that they see as a threat to his power. Oh man, you just gave me five more reasons to vote for Trump. Of course, my vote's probably already been harvested and sent in by some Democrat, you know, on my behalf and voted for Biden. But um, it's going to be great, guys. What he's saying, Trump's going to get loyalists in there to do his work. It's a nightmare to Democrats. It should be, if only. They're going to get rid of the cases that he has. He's going to start cases probably against the Biden family. Yeah, let's start up the cases on Jim Biden. Let's start up the cases on the Biden crime family, Jill Biden, Hunter Biden. So the cases that Biden stopped, Trump's going to start. The cases that Biden started, Trump's going to stop. And that's a privilege of the presidency, buddy. Don't pretend like you don't know. I'm acknowledging that it's both sides, okay? These people are lying to you. Twerp. He's been very clear in his own words. He's going to use that to go after his own critics. Now, he's Trump is never going to go after his critics. How could Trump possibly go after all of his critics? You're talking about 50% of America, half of America, all of the media. Trump's going to go after them all. Dude, there ain't enough lawfare in the world to pull that off. Trump has always had more critics than anybody else. So, no, not a big deal. But we do have Hillary, the, the bad tweets guy against Hillary. He went to jail for memes, okay? We have people persecuted by the Biden administration because the Biden went after his critics, say on J6, the Proud Boys. There's all kinds of people that Biden has gone after. I, you know, we're doing this uh, protest in Nashville last week where we uh, supported the Nashville 10. These are people who... Um, went and peacefully protested at an abortion clinic and they're facing prison time. So who, under Biden's order, who went after his critics? None more than Biden. Yesterday on True Social, he's liking and following these uh, these uh, social media posts that talk about creating military tribunals for Liz Cheney, for Mitch McConnell. Uh, he's not going after Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell endorsed him. Maybe Liz Cheney, I'd be for that, given she destroyed evidence, given she told lies about J6, that is, she went for a preferred end instead of followed justice. Hey, and if the courts find them guilty, no one's above the law. Remember that one? Might be hyperbole, might not. Yeah, it's hyperbole. I'm glad you gave us a might not, gave us a might be. But certainly shows you the direction that he wants to go. And again, there's nothing that I've said in this segment that he has not said or that his people haven't said. Uh, yeah, but what you didn't say is how, which side really jails the opposition? Throw them in the garbage. Here's Dead Shay. Who's jailing political opponents right now, rotting in jail, Navarro. You twist. And there's Steve Bannon and they're trying to get Trump himself. This level of blind, blindness can only happen on MSNBC. I'm slug in exile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God bless you. Take care and have a merry, merry Christmas.